So, you finally decide to spend those hard-earned bonus miles and fly business class. But the airline website tells you there are only economy seats on your route, and it's not even a low-cost airline. Weird, I know, but the shocking truth is that airlines save millions by switching planes to the right routes, so that planes with business class you were dreaming about is flying on a different route. Hmm. When you pull up the flight schedule and see that magical direct flight appear, or vanish, that's no accident either. There's a flight time calculator running in the background somewhere, crunching every detail, like the distance to the city, what the runway there is like, how much the plane weighs with passengers and cargo. Oh, and don't forget the climate. Strong headwinds? Better swap in a plane with better fuel efficiency or longer range. All right, that all makes sense. But then, there are often no flights between two major cities that logically feel like they should be connected. Usually, it's because refueling would cost more than the ticket sales. Sometimes a direct flight magically disappears and turns into a layover one. The reason behind this could be that the old aircraft couldn't handle the range, and the newer plane wasn't profitable enough. Airlines aren't winging it, and everything is well calculated. Aircraft load factor, passenger demand, runway length, fuel efficiency, and current economic trends. The tiniest factors, like the cost of that overpriced chocolate bar you purchase on board, are part of the algorithm's cruel calculus. Even if thousands of people would love to hop on a plane, the numbers might not add up. That's why your dream trip might involve a layover you didn't plan for. So layovers aren't necessarily a thing with long flights, and sometimes it does make more sense for airlines to fly for nearly 19 hours nonstop. Currently, the longest flight in the world is between Singapore and New York JFK. It flies a specially configured ultra-long-range Airbus A350 with only business and premium economy seats. China Eastern plans to beat that record with a new flight between Shanghai and Buenos Aires. Because of headwinds, it will take up to 29 hours. They will definitely need to use tools like the Air Miles Calculator and Flight Planner to determine if this one is going to make economic sense. So far, they don't expect a huge demand. If you ask me, I'd definitely not want to spend over a day in the air. So we have many factors that influence what plane is going where, and sometimes the choices get personal. Well, airline personal, not human personal. Premium routes aren't filled with tourists. They're filled with business class passengers who are ready to pay those outrageous prices to be able to lie in their beds and have a fancy meal. When it comes to airline operating costs per seat, those premium seats are where the real profit hides. Take busy business routes like LA to New York. The economy cabin fills the plane, but airlines really live off that elite business class ticket. Sometimes a single seat costs as much as a pre-owned car. So the choice of aircraft isn't just about fitting enough people. It's about strategically placing the right seats on the right plane. That's why your luxury upgrade seat exists. And it's not random generosity. It's a carefully calculated profit center. Now all this sounds logical, but some of the planning decisions might still seem weird. Why would an airline send a 737 to a town of only 80,000 people? It could be because they want you, their favored passenger, to have a consistent experience and fly comfy, even if the town doesn't exactly justify the cost of a larger jet. But then you have the other extreme. For example, if you're heading to Canada's far north, you might be flying an ancient 737-200, the only jet tough enough to land on gravel without falling apart. Sure, it's old, creaky, and smells faintly of nostalgia, but it works. For just short regional flights, the system gets ridiculously precise, almost funny actually. Just a handful of extra passengers can change everything. Instead of a small turboprop, suddenly a CRJ jet gets the job. And that tiny switch doesn't just affect one flight, it messes with the whole schedule, how much fuel gets used, and even which crew members are assigned. Ecology also plays a huge role in those airplane decisions, of course. Airlines just can't happily run hulking 747s everywhere anymore, back when they didn't have to worry about fuel costs. Now, efficiency rules. Because every drop of jet fuel burned adds up, both on the planet and on the airline's profit sheet. The good news? 
you'll see those sleek modern jets like the Boeing 787 Dreamliner or the Airbus A350 replacing older, thirsty, four-engine beasts. For instance, the Lufthansa Group says their new planes use up around half a gallon of jet fuel per passenger for roughly every 62 miles in the air, which is about 30% less than many of their older aircraft used to sip. Every pound of kerosene, every small drag caused by extra weight or inefficient engines, and every extra seat that isn't sold equals money down the drain. To avoid it, airlines must be flexible and keep their fleet up to date. Now, to achieve that, hub carriers like Delta or Lufthansa often keep a zoo of different aircraft ready for swaps. They need flexibility so that a sudden maintenance issue or passenger surge can't ruin their network. Low-cost carriers like Ryanair do the opposite. They run a bunch of clones of 737s. These planes are simple, efficient, and predictable. So there's no need for fancy swaps or overthinking. It's kind of comforting in a chaotic airline world. And when you book a ticket with them, you won't be surprised to be flying a completely different plane from what you expected. Now, airports themselves have a say in all this, too. Some runways are just too short, winds get too strong, or the technology is too limited at certain locations. Even if you want to fly somewhere, your plane might be grounded because the airport isn't ready. Take Wancho E. E. Rasakin Airport on the tiny Caribbean island of Saba. Its runway is only about 1,300 feet long. That's shorter than some city streets. Forget flying in on a big Boeing. Only small, super agile prop planes can pull that off. Then there's Courchevel Altiport in the French Alps, which looks more like a ski slope than a runway. It's barely 1,700 feet long and tilted at an 18% gradient. So, basically, pilots land downhill. No big jets here either, just tiny planes brave enough to touch down without tumbling into a snowdrift. But then again, it's a luxury resort, so those small jets seem like a perfect fit. And if you think Kirchevel's runway is bad, try landing at Tonkantan International Airport in Honduras. It's surrounded by mountains, winds whip through the valley, and until recently, its runway was rather short. You can imagine why airlines think twice before sending big jets there. And they can also consider route profitability. Even if thousands of people want to fly, the wrong plane can turn a route from gold into a loss. Airlines calculate airline operating costs per seat, forecast passenger load, and run simulations that would make a supercomputer sweat. And yes, this also affects your ticket price. That cheap weekend getaway you just booked and bragged to everyone about? Well, it might actually be expensive for the airline to operate, which is why the flight is packed with fees, upsells, and strategic stopovers. So, as you can see, airlines have perfected the art of matching flight distance calculator numbers with passenger demand, aircraft capabilities, and profitability. They create a world where your vacation, business trip, or accidental layover isn't random. It's the result of millions of calculations and thousands of contingency plans. Airlines save millions by switching planes, not because they're mean, but because they're brilliant, calculating, and really particular about numbers. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.